What's up, baby bio penguins? Today we do topic 2013, number six. This one's on cellular organelles. So they tell us that we have this data collected um, from three different types of eukaryotic cells. That is important to make sure you recognize that. We're looking at eukaryotic cells. Based on the analysis of the data, we need to identify likely function of the cell and explain how the data supports that identification. So the first one we're looking at is cell type X. So if we look at X, we see that there's a small amount of smooth ER, a small amount of rough ER, there's a large amount of mitochondria, and a, uh, cilia is present, and then there's a small amount of Golgi. So that tells us that this cell requires a lot of ATP, requires a lot of energy, as well as it has cilia. So cilia, in case you forgot, are these little hair-like kind of fragments, um, sorry, not fragments, but hair-like appendages on the outside of the cell. Um, and so they're usually meant for mobility. So we're allowing for organisms to move using the cilia, um, as well as you can move things past it. So for example, like in your trachea, you've got um, ciliated cells that are going to push the mucus up out of your trachea and down into your esophagus um, to catch all the different debris that might be stuck um, and kind of help it to be removed from your body. Um, and so since the cilia needs ATP, I'm going to say that my cells function is probably for locomotion or movement of the cell. Um, and the reason why is cilia for movement, and there's a large amount of mitochondria to provide the energy for the locomotion or for the movement of those particles along the cell. So the student talks, this is cell X likely functions in locomotion because it has a large number of micro, uh, mitochondria, which forms cellular respiration synthesized ATP, which provides the energy needed for movement. Cell X also has cilia, which are used for movement. So it goes and tells them the function of the cell and then how each of these organelles has um, backed up that identification. And so you need to make sure that when they ask you to use the data to support or the data to refute or use the data anyway, that you are extensively using that data, not just restating what you see, but you're adding a little bit to it. So yes, I see there's a large amount of mitochondria and that the cilia is present, but what does the mitochondria do and what did the cilia do that helps for that function? So moving on to our second cell, we have cell type Y. So this one has a large amount of smooth ER, a large amount of rough ER, a moderate amount of mitochondria, the cilia is absent, and then there's a large amount of Golgi. So you have to think to yourself, okay, smooth ER's function is detoxification. It's going to detoxify, it's going to store calcium, as well as it's going to synthesize lipids. The rough ER is going to synthesize proteins. Um, the mitochondria, again, we already talked about, it's going to synthesize ATP. That one doesn't seem like it's kind of standing out as much to me. It doesn't have any cilia. And then the Golgi's responsibility is for packaging and modifying the products from the rough ER. So since there's a large amount of smooth ER, I think that there's two different jobs in this. One, it can either be for detoxification of the cell, or two, I think this cell is going to secrete. So the two options you could have put, secretion or exocytosis on protein synthesis. Um, there is a large amount of rough ER and Golgi because the rough ER produces and the Golgi packages those proteins. Um, or you could have talked about the lipid hormone synthesis or detoxification because it has a large amount of smooth ER that is responsible for producing lipids or responsible for producing hormones or responsible for detoxification. So soon goes on. Cell Y likely functions to synthesize and secrete proteins and compounds needed elsewhere in the organism because it has a large amount of smooth and rough ER, which function in protein synthesis and processing. And rough ER has ribosomes, which actually perform protein synthesis, and a large number of Golgi bodies, which package and ship out proteins. So they have this point. The last one is Z. Z usually throws kids through a loop. They don't have any organelles. So your brain immediately goes, oh, it's prokaryotic. But remember, the prompt told us that these are all eukaryotic cells. So what kind of cell is not going to have any organelles? Well, oftentimes, cells that are responsible for transport. So your hemoglobin has no organelles because of the fact that we need to transport the oxygen throughout your body. Um, and you also see it in dead cells or other cells because they don't require those organelles. So the options you could have put here would be transport, protection, support, storage, or that it has no function. Maybe it's a dead cell undergoing apoptosis. Maybe we're just looking at maximizing our volume in our storage space. Maybe it's just a ground tissue or vascular tissue. Maybe it's just epidermal cells, or maybe it's for oxygen transport, water transport, okay? And the reason why we know this, it does not require any organelles. And so it does, since it doesn't have those organelles, we know that it is um, gonna follow one of those different functions. So remember, APO pain is just success. Bye, y'all.